let's move over to some of the other um, stuff that's going on here in terms of predictions. So <laughs> you're going to see a lot of other people giving predictions at the end of 2021 and going into the beginning of 2022. You're going to start seeing all these prediction streams on YouTube. You're going to start seeing all these prediction uh, articles and stuff and tweets and all this stuff. So let's look at one coming from somebody who has some interesting opinions here in crypto, right? Let's take a look at Eric, right? Eric Wall. Some people love him. Some people absolutely despise him. <laughs> but hey, man, if you don't have haters, you're not doing nothing in this market. So, you know, I would say there's some interesting thoughts in this tweet storm. Now, the one thing you have to think whenever anybody is giving information on predictions, right? I would say Arcane Research pretty much is a little bit more uh, neutral than most places that are giving predictions and different information going into going into 2022. But looking at somebody like this on Twitter, Twitter has probably some of the most, some of the least reliable information on Twitter, uh, uh, in crypto, right? YouTube has a lot of clickbait as well, but just generally speaking, right? People write all sorts of things on Twitter and then re redact them later, right? Um, YouTube is a little bit harder to do, but anyways, uh, these people not saying his opinion in general, I also don't follow him, so I'll follow him. Um, but not, there's going to be some, a lot of bias. There's going to be, you know, a lot of pumping your own bags. So I'm not going to agree with every point he says. It's not because I don't like him as a person or whatever. It's just, it's, you got to have some disagreements on things. And there's some things I'll agree with him on, of course, but whatever you think about his background, at least he is putting some information out there um, for as some food for thought. So uh, let's take a look down here and see what is going on. And actually, your memory does not serve you correctly, Mr. Perez. He says, I remember remembered the hella bullish $1,350 uh, on dot, Charlie. What changed? I've been saying this the entire bull market uh, that my uh, dot prediction was uh, and still is three to four hundred dollars by the end of the bull market. We did make a mistake on the Karura prediction. We accidentally put a one in front of that one. We meant to say Karura at three hundred and fifty dollars, right by the end of the bull market. Um, so that's the two uh, changes there. So um, we'll talk about. Karu is a different story, but my, my dot prediction still stands. Um, let's keep scrolling down here and see what's going on with Eric, though. Um, so appreciate the super chat, Mr. Perez. Uh, what do we got here? So, number one, he has 24 things, I think, that he's looking for in 2022. Here, optim optimistic roll-ups will take off, but ZK roll-ups won't really. Probably. Uh, he also says layer two tokens will surpass 50 billion in total market cap. So that goes very well into uh, what we we're talking about over here, right? So uh, layer two tokens, definitely something to pay attention to. Ethereum won't flip Bitcoin. Also, these guys agreed with Eric on that. Now, I won't heavily disagree, but I'll say there's definitely a chance, right? There's definitely a chance. What would have to happen? for Ethereum to flip Bitcoin. I think the main thing which would have to happen for Ethereum to flip Bitcoin, and it would have to happen at the correct timing and the correct market situation, Ethereum would need to basically solve its fee issue, at least for this bull market, not necessarily forever, right? But Ethereum would need to reduce fees. Um, in the crypto mindset course, we will discuss one possibility that we do think could happen in 2022 um, that would actually accomplish this as Ethereum uh, progresses going forward. But if Ethereum does not solve that problem, I agree then Ethereum will not flip Bitcoin. The other kind of variable to that equation is that it has to solve its fees after it's already Bitcoin, after the altcoins have been taking off, Bitcoin's already lost some dominance, then Ethereum would have to improve its fee situation going back down to the fees that we saw towards the beginning of the bull market. And then Ethereum could flip Bitcoin as we're going into like a frothy period of the market. Those are all the things that would have to happen. So a lot of people think that that won't happen. So that's why he's saying that. And here, or at least that's what I assume. Um, 
number four, but no Ethereum killer. Solana, AVEX, Luna, Cardano will flip ETH either. I definitely agree with that. Ethereum will continue. Ethereum and Bitcoin will continue to be the number one and number two, most likely. Taproot won't amass more than 20% adoption. That will be interesting to see. I think a lot of people just generally in the crypto market don't really think about that all that much. But for Bitcoiners, that will be important to watch. Um, DeFi will continue to happen on, continue to not happen on Bitcoin. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, Bitcoin is not a great place um, to be building on top of for DeFi. Um, we already know that. Um, Lightning Network adoption will be underwhelming. Not even whelming at all. We won't surp or surpass 6,000 Bitcoin in public Lightning Network channels. I think um, the other report was saying more than 5,000. He says won't surpass 6,000. So that's kind of interesting that their numbers are a little bit different. Um, right? So both could be correct. <laughs> Maybe we get to 5,500, right? Um, here, eight stable coins won't migrate back to Bitcoin, USDT adoption on Lightning Network won't get, get any traction. So I would probably say on the Lightning Network, you're probably correct on that one. Um, stable coins won't uh, migrate back to Bitcoin. So basically, right, um, some money will be siphoned off from this market via stable coins, right? That is kind of an interesting way to look at it. That is that because we're going into a bear market at that time, or is that simply because um, that's one way for the traditional markets to, you know, take a little off of the top of this market that is possible. Polygon's ZK roll-up tech acquisition won't go anywhere. Interesting. I don't know too much about all, all the details of that, but yeah, he doesn't doesn't think it'll go anywhere. Um, and he also wasn't really bullish on ZK rolls earlier either, right? Uh, number 10 here. People will find new exciting use cases for NFTs. It turns out JPEGs were just the first iteration. I've been saying this the entire 2021, right? And actually, we've been saying this since the first Crypto Mindset course in September of 2020 for Q4 of 2020, right? We told you guys, this, every time we've been doing the Crypto Mindset course, pay attention to NFTs. Pay attention to NFTs. They're, they are JPEGs now, and they're kind of funny things to look at. But going forward... Right, there will be other iterations of NFTs. I think we see maybe a few of those, right, with gaming especially, um, in 2022. But we see more so in the next bull market, right? And, and there's going to be a lot of creativity in the bear market on those as well. Let's go here. Um, there will be a lot more thoughts in crypto, <laughs> and not. Not the kind of thoughts you're thinking, right? The, the ones that are spelled like this related to the above. <laughs> That's great. So I would say it's related to the NFT space, but it'll also be related to the bull market just getting very, very heated, right? So as prices increase, that tends to happen as well. Um, but I would heavily agree with that one. Oh, I'll just press like on that because it's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> let's go for number 12 here. Um for Ethereum-based rollups, it will look like they will solve fees uh, and congestion in the beginning, but before the year has come to an end, signs of problematic clogging will be visi visible again. So yeah, Ethereum may solve its fee issues, he says, temporarily, right? Um, but it will, by the end of the, the year, come back again. Now, not only for rollups, but there's other technologies out there that we'll talk about in the Crypto Mindset course um, that could reduce Ethereum fees by 50x, 50x, right? So if you have, let's say, $100 fees now, right, you'll have like 20 cent fees um, if that technology were to basically um, be implemented. Now, of course, if Ethereum gets heavily used, even more so, right, 50x more use, then the fees come back, <laughs> right? So um, a lot of ways that Ethereum can solve its scaling issues are pretty much temporary. You know, once we get into the next bull market, um, especially, you know, let's say around 2025, 2026, Ethereum is going to lose a lot of market share to a lot of, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, to a lot of other layer one solutions and layer zeros if it does not 
successfully implement layer two is it's basically what happened to Bitcoin will essentially happen to Ethereum. Now, how do, how do you interpret that? Right. Um, and this is going not only into 2022, but into beyond going into, you know, 2025, 2026. Right. So how do you interpret that? Basically Ethereum, people are like, oh yeah, you're, you're in that Ethereum thing. It's, yeah, it's price appreciating pretty good. But if you didn't get it into Ethereum under $10,000, you basically, you know, are not getting that many X's, right? So might as well go for the layer, lay, other layer one solutions. You're going to see that a lot in the next bull market. People treating Ethereum kind of like Bitcoin. So the Ethereum maxis becoming basically the same, you know, as Bitcoin maxis is going to be kind of funny to watch. Um, but yeah, uh, just understand that's kind of how Ethereum is rolling out unless they pull out some magic rabbit from their hat. Um but that doesn't mean Ethereum's price won't appreciate well, right? Getting Ethereum under $10,000 or especially under $5,000 is like buying Bitcoin under five to $10,000, um, hundred um, percent. Data availability or DA will be the big theme for 2022. Chains that specialize in it will get traction. Um, some rollups will choose to bridge to Ethereum, but use other solutions as their data availability layer. Interesting something to look into. Uh, the rainbow model for Bitcoin will stay intact. And I mean, uh, actually stay intact, not stay intact because I made up new numbers. <laughs> I think he's basically talking about um, what's that called? Uh, da, 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 da. I know Ben Cohen popularized it, but he did not create it. Um, what's that called again? Um, bu -bu 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 Bum. There we go. Logarithmic growth curves, right? So, right, he's saying basically this will stay intact right now. If Bitcoin were to go to the top of that, it would be at right around 167. The average fair value of Bitcoin, if it were to go to there right now or in January, it'd be about 63,000. The lower end of that being a floor, right, for Bitcoin right now is around the $26,000 mark. So me saying Bitcoin won't go below $18,000 ever again is well below that area, but there's other things I was using as well. But I agree with this. The logarithmic growth curves, which are often put in the form of rainbows, will probably stay intact. And as long as you don't change the goalposts, right? Number 15, we will have the technology ready for low fee payments in highly private dollar synthetics with some amount of decentralization and censorship resistance to them in stable coins and algorithmic stable coins, but they won't yet be very become very commonplace in dark net markets in 2022. Yeah, I don't think so at all. Um, they won't be commonplace yet, but yeah, algorithmic stable coins, stuff like this, also other types um, will become more prevalent. That did agree here with the other report as well. Yes, the mer so here we had a question from a guy who said, you missed the juiciest one. Do you think ETH2 will merge and uh, be successful, right? Yes, the merge will happen and it will be successful. There may be some resistance from proof of work miners, but any remaining proof of work chain split of Ethereum will uh, swiftly fall into irrelevance. irrelevance. So Ethereum will go into the, the Ethereum 2.0. No catastro catastrophic attacks on Ethereum 2 proof of stake occur. I think, yeah, proof of stake will work out very, very well for Ethereum. Um, so yeah, actually, it will be very, very nice to see that take place because right now the miners are making a killing on Ethereum fees. There will be no new Bitcoin soft fork upgrade in 2022. Okay, wasn't expecting one anyway. Uh, 18, there will be new signs of institutional Bitcoin adoption. Um, I think, you know, some people will take a jab at this one as well, actually making, there's no new updates to Bitcoin, basically. Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Depends on how you look at the market. Um, but institutions will continue to get into Bitcoin, so price will go up. Um, 18 here, there will be new signs of institutional Bitcoin adoption. Oh, that leads into that one quite nicely. A very large pension fund investment or something along those lines. Uh oh, uh oh, we talked about this in the crypto mindset course many a time. Something that kickstarts the micro strategy narrative again, which mostly fizzled out in 2021, right? So, yeah, maybe we start seeing that corporate treasury is getting a little bit more interested in Bitcoin. We didn't see that so much here, but again, like I said before, it only needs a little bit more increase to get people interested in it. <laughs> this is pretty funny. 
Ohm fails. <laughs> I would not be surprised whatsoever if that happens. Uh, number 20 here. I would like to say 2022 is a year of uh, corticide, uh, but probably better not to give your hopes up. 30% um, chance it happens near the, the year end of the year, more likely in 2023. The, the prediction here was IOTA prediction would be nice too. Did you already have your talks with Hans? So yeah, I'm not really that interested in what's going on with the IOTA. Um, so I'm not really interested in this prediction either. Um, personally, just okay. But eh, maybe that's my mistake. Maybe you should pay attention to that. Um, but generally speaking, I agree. It's probably not something to pay attention to for 2021. or sorry, 2022. Um, here, 21st uh, prediction here is AVAX will join the top 10. Cardano will drop out of it. We did see that yesterday in the report that we were talking about over here as well, talking about Cardano and Ripple dropping out of the top 10. Here he's saying AVAX will come into the top 10, which is not a crazy thing by any means. Terra already, Luna jumped into the top 10. Polkadot's there, Avalanche can get in there. Um, so there's only 10 spots, right? So these four are for sure basically going to be there. Solana, USDC will also be there in my opinion. Luna should be there. Polkadot should be there. AVAX probably should be there. So Ripple and Cardano, that really leaves only two spots left in the top 10, um, right? Um, so Avalanche gaining one of those spots. Does Dogecoin gain the other spot? Matic gain the other spot? Uh, what other options do we have here? UST, does that gain the spot? Um, Phantom, does that gain the spot in the top 10? That would be pretty interesting. Right, so there's a lot of different chances here for different things to jump into that maybe ripple spot essentially. Um, so yeah, definitely pay attention to any changes in the top 10 coins. Uh, 22, Richard Hart forks BSC, the pulse chain. It will have a hundred billion dollar market cap, uh, but be uh, placed back at spot 202 on coin market cap. <laughs> Oh boy, the hexagons are going to be angry at you, Eric. <laughs> That's funny though. <laughs> I like the sense of humor. Um, <laughs> so interesting, right? Once we have more, in, once we have more information there on uh, what is going on with um, uh, Pulse Chain in terms of you know Pulse Chain, Pulse X, and all this stuff, a hundred billion dollar market cap ain't nothing to sneeze at, right? I mean, where would that put it today, right? Um, bu -bu 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 -bum, right? Damn, bros, right? Definitely there, right? So, um, yeah, I could open up Nomics. We could take a look at Hex and all that stuff and where that is in market cap and have that whole discussion, but most of you guys already know that. So we got the alert, emergency alarm here. Time to get in that Pulse X sacrifice, right? So, but, you know, <laughs> pretty much true. Somebody in the chat says, uh, uh, Hex will win when they win the lawsuit. Yeah, there's there's a solid potential chance of that, but you're already starting to see uh, these exchanges shift the goalposts in advance of that, right? I think it was Nomics who changed the way they calculated market cap just so Hex basically lost where it was ranked, right? Um, and so that will pr you'll probably see things like that happen if Hex wins the lawsuit. So you see Hex as well get into the top 100 in terms of actually being ranked properly or at least somewhat properly so it'll stay in the top 30 um and then the pulse chain as well will probably be you know there but it might not be ranked properly at the beginning as he so funnily says there um any hedera 22 22 predictions DeFi won't happen there i agree and outside of DeFi, uh evm and sc platform or sc platforms have no real use case uh so yeah centralized uh DeFi, <laughs> which is pretty much what hedera is uh yeah won't happen i agree it shouldn't happen either uh here he says adam overtakes litecoin <laughs> so the coin with infinite supply overtaking litecoin rip litecoin essentially sorry bros sorry um but yeah uh i i think adam does bring a lot more to the market than litecoin does anyways at least for right now litecoin could be underused underutilized right? But it is what it is. Adam overtakes it. And uh, yeah, things change in this market. He says near is great, but nothing will happen on it. 
yeah, its price is appreciated pretty well. Um, but it, yeah, I haven't heard too much that in rumblings of anything really going on with it. So I'm, I tend to agree with that. Um, Ripple in the top three again. This will never happen again. Thank God. Um, but hey, never say never, but probably you are right. Um, extended multi-year bear market or the narrative driven turn based on the super cycle, right? Which one prevails? Something in between. No mega, no mega bear market, no super cycle. I definitely agree. No super cycle, right? I think that's a narrative that gets spun out there to get people uber bullish, um, which you know, I would love a super cycle, just my the rea realistic, you know, logical mind in me says that is not going to happen based on how institutions run their run their institutions, right? Uh, no big and bear market. I also agree with that. I don't think we'll have a crazy ass bear market. It'd be nice to see the bear market stay under 80% of a, of a decline for Bitcoin, right? If Bitcoin can stay like from absolute peak in the bull market to absolute trough in the bear market being less than an 80% retracement. That would be that to me would be the definition of not a big mega bear market, right? It'd still be a pretty significant bear market, but not as bad as the past. Um, 28, my take on RGB is, uh, which is he said, what, what do you think about RGB? Will it ever get released? Uh, according to the team, it can do anything Ethereum can do, but on light, but on Bitcoin Lightning. Uh, so we already said DeFi won't happen on Bitcoin Lightning. So my take on RGP is that it is an incomprehensible mess, and my prediction for it is that it will never deliver anything at all like Ethereum in 2022. <laughs> I would probably agree with that. That's pretty funny, actually. Uh, will Plan B admit model is broken or just uh, block everyone on crypto Twitter <laughs> after the 100K, uh, you know, uh, call failed? He said, "Oops." Um, didn't want to do that. God damn it. Not what I wanted to do there. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I accidentally tweeted, up, clicked off there. All right. Didn't want you guys looking at my DMs. <laughs> but, um, let's go back here, uh, to that last one. Press. How did I not press that? Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> we are live. That is true. Oh, that's funny as fuck. All right. We'll go back, though. My back. Back. Um. <laughs> funny shit. Um, not really a big deal. Just better better that we keep it that way. Um, ba -ba -bum. There we go. So um, he says, after 100K failed... Um, he meant 100K on average this cycle. Um, so he will say the S2F is still valid no matter the price in 2022 because the price could go to 300K in 2023 and solve the average. He will block more people than I have followers. Obviously, it's a joke, right? I, I do think Plan B obviously has taken a bit too much of a hit here. I do think that the there is some use to the model, not necessarily that it's entirely valid, but it has a lot of use still. So um, yeah, anyways. Uh, 30 here, five of these predictions will be incorrect, but not six. This will be the fifth incorrect prediction. Uh, what's your prediction on the ratio of your predictions? <laughs> Funny stuff. Um, this is interesting, right? So give us a prediction on hex, Eric. Will we, uh, do a, th a third, hundred X in a, a year in a row? It says it won't even do a 10 X. What's the reply to that? Let's see that. Um, <laughs> some people laughing at that. Uh, good stuff. I do think Hex will do a 10x in 2022. Um, here will Pulse and Pulse X be successful? Are you a uh, game to make prediction? Right here, he talked about that, but Pulse will probably pump six to seven X in the first few weeks, he says. So pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on on his predictions and my thoughts on them during that time. <laughs> uh Wes in the chat says crypto thoughts. His, his he thinks in 2022 crypto thoughts will call Charlie their crypto daddy. That's funny as fuck. Um, <laughs> the chat always cracks me up. Uh, what are some other predictions here for 2022? So, like I said, guys, we're gonna go uh, into a few others. Right, these are not the only ones that we're looking at here. Other things that are definitely interesting to pay attention.